is America, an enormous land of great natural wonders, of lofty ranges, of snow-capped mountains, of mighty rivers, of lengthy shorelines on the two largest oceans, of natural wealth untold within its vast expanse. This is America, with farms where once was wilderness, cities where once only an occasional band of red-skinned hunters camped in pursuit of game, factories representing the world's greatest industrial power where once was only meadow and forest. This is America, a land whose people have built an envied way of life and who unstintingly protect and defend what they have built. And a lot of protection is needed for this America of ours in this world of today. One protection that we have against possible surprise attack from the air is a radar network encircling the country to warn us against the stealthy approach of an enemy. But radar, like television, is limited to line of sight range. Radar cannot go beyond mountain peaks or man-made obstruction. Radar effectiveness is also reduced by storms and even milder natural disturbances. Any of these things can open aerial highways through our radar network for enemy bomber penetration. And this pleasant, peaceful neighborhood may be the gateway for a surprise attack. What type is it? I can't tell yet. Multibomber, but I can't see any markings. Sue, can you identify it? Strange. All our bombers have a white star and a blue background for identification. Jim, do you think it's... It a... could be, but we're not supposed to guess. Aircraft flash, Elliot 84106. Here's the info. Air defense, go ahead. Aircraft flash, one Malta bomber, very low, no delay. Bravo Hotel, three five, black, west, one, flying south. Check, thank you. The Fosters did their job well. Their aircraft flash was completed within the prescribed time. It took them less than 15 seconds. They worked with speed and accuracy, like the other patriotic citizens, supplementing our radar defense in the Ground Observer Corps. But it wasn't always that way. I remember the day they first joined up. They were green as a gourd. I drove up with Mr. Blake, the County Civil Defense Coordinator, and Sergeant Hawkins. Hello, Sue. Jim. Hello, Dave. Nice Hi. to see you. I'd like to have you meet some friends of mine. Mr. and Mrs. Foster, Mrs. Major Carson, and Sergeant Hawkins of the Air Defense Hi, Filter Center. Hi. I hope we're not interrupting your work. Oh, not at all. Jim's grateful for interruptions. He hates working in the garden. <laughs> Next year, all I'm going to grow is weeds. Much easier. <laughs> uh, what can we do for you, gentlemen? Mr. Blake will explain. This is his department. Well, Jim, you recall our conversation last Tuesday when I told you about the Ground Observer Corps? Yes, Dave, I remember. Seems you wanted me to be a supervisor. That's right. We'd like you to set up an observation post right here on your property. Would that be agreeable to you, Jim? Why, certainly. No reason why we can't, is there, Sue? None at all. From what you've told me about the Ground Observer Corps, I think it's one real way that people like us can help our country. And now we understand that other people have the H-bomb, we especially feel like we want to help. Mr. Blake was right. He said we could count on you folks. What I'd like to know, Major, is why you picked out our particular place. The view from here across the valley is excellent, which makes this location ideal. 
Well, this is the ground observer's guide. It'll give you all the information you need. And these forms are to authorize your telephone and list your names with the Air Force. We'll fill them out before we leave. I might add that all calls to the Air Defense Filter Center when reporting aircraft are government collect calls. You'll use the aircraft flash message record to log your messages. I'll show you how to make out your report. First, fill in the page number and date. Next, list your observation post. Because of its location, it has been given the code name Bravo Hotel 35 Black. That indicates to the filter center the geographic location of your post. Each section of the record is known as an item and is numbered. The items are arranged in such a manner as to simplify reporting procedure. Item one designates number of aircraft to be reported. One. If there are too many to count in a hurry, give an approximate number. When you're unable to tell the number of aircraft due to darkness or weather conditions, report unknown. Item two covers the type of aircraft. This requires training in aircraft recognition. Here, you report the number and type of engines. Single engine. By engine. Multi engine. Because of the compactness of jet design, the number of jet engines is difficult to distinguish. Jet report as unknown when you're not certain of the type of aircraft. That covers the type of aircraft, but we also want to know the function of the aircraft. Is it a harmless cargo plane or a bomber? Item three is for that information, and the function is almost as easy to determine as the number of engines. Fighter, usually unmistakable in appearance. Bomber, Cargo or passenger plane. Seaplane, either the pontoon type or the hull type. Trainer. Unknown if the aircraft is not visible. Now we come to item four, altitude of aircraft. You don't have to be exact as to hundreds or thousands of feet. This is a cinch, a B-29 flying very low at an altitude below 1,000 feet, just above building and treetop level. All aircraft flying at less than 1,000 feet from the level of your post are reported as very low. This B-29 is flying low. Aircraft flying between 1,000 and 5,000 feet are reported as low. This B-29 is flying high. Determination of altitude becomes more difficult and less accurate as the altitude increases. From five to 15,000 feet, aircraft are reported as high. Vapor trails caused by condensation of the exhaust gases are common at very high altitudes. When you see vapor trails, Report very high. Suppose there's a delay in reaching the Air Defense Filter Center on the phone. That's taken care of in item five, time delay. Your Air Defense Filter Center is located in Middletown. How long does it take you to put through a long distance call there? About a minute or two. Well, aircraft flashes are priority calls, so you should reach the center in about 30 seconds. However, here's how to compute time delay. Each one of these rings indicates a one-mile radius from the observation post. The outer ring marks your area of responsibility. Suppose a B-29 approaches your area of responsibility and you can reach the filter center in 30 seconds. You estimate the approximate speed of the aircraft. Then place the aircraft flash call 30 seconds before the aircraft reaches the point closest to you. As the plane continues its flight, 
Fill out the aircraft flash message record giving data at this position. The information in items 7, 8, and 9 show the reporting position of the plane. Notice that item 5, time delay, has not been filled in yet. The filter center should answer in the first 30 seconds. Report, no delay. 30 seconds to 1 minute 30 seconds. Report, 1 minute delay. 1 minute 30 seconds to 2 minutes 30 seconds. Report, 2 minutes delay. 2 minutes 30 seconds to 3 minutes 30 seconds. Report, 3 minutes delay. 3 minutes 30 seconds to 4 minutes 30 seconds. Report, 4 minutes delay. After 4 minutes 30 seconds, cancel your aircraft flash call with the local operator. Unless previous instructions from your filter center are to keep trying. Then note excessive time delay on the aircraft flash record. Now let's say an F-86 is penetrating the reporting area. The flash call should be placed immediately and the information entered on the aircraft flash record, although the aircraft may be beyond your area before your call is completed. The elapsed time has been two minutes, 10 seconds. Report two minutes delay and enter that in column five. Next, fill in your observation post code in column six. Your code is Bravo Hotel 35 Black. To fill in columns 7, 8, and 9, you will need an orientation card. For your information to be of value to the filter center, it's necessary that we know the proper heading of the aircraft. With this orientation card, you can't make any mistake in direction. By the way, Mrs. Foster, where would you say north is? I think it's about over there. Well, now I'll just check that with my compass. This card will give the heading when oriented to true north. Now that we've oriented the card to true north, we'll pick that hill as the point for orienting your card in the future. To aid in estimating distance of aircraft from your observation post, use established landmarks. If aircraft appear in the vicinity of any of these landmarks, you can estimate their distance and direction more accurately in relation to your observation post. All aircraft passing within one half mile of your post are reported as overhead. At greater distances, report to the nearest mile. The direction is reported according to the nearest compass point. Use only the eight points shown on the compass. Report the direction of flight the same way. Always remember to start off by saying flying north or flying south. Mr. Foster, do you think you can do it? Well, uh, I'll try. West, uh, three, flying south? That's fine. I knew you'd catch on. Supposing the airplane starts circling? If it changes its line of flight 90 degrees or more, do not say circling. Never make two reports on an aircraft while it is within your area. When the airplane leaves your area of responsibility, its line of flight will be established by the next observation post. Major, how do we fill in the items in the last column of the flash message record? Item 10, special remarks. Use it when you see unusual objects or actions. If we haven't any information, should we report unknown in this column? This is the only instance where you don't. It's to be used for special remarks. But there's no limit to what may be reported, such as aircraft dropping bombs, dropping parachutes, either personnel or equipment, aircraft in distress, on fire, or engine smoking, an aircraft incident, such as a crash, unusual aircraft, such as blimps and helicopters, which cannot be reported under columns two and three of the record, and, of course, aircraft in combat. And now, Mrs. Foster, if you don't mind, I'd like to see your telephone. Of course. Won't you gentlemen be seated? Now, 
I'd like to show you how to phone in your report. I won't dial the operator. Aircraft flash. Elliot, one, two, three, four, five. Of course, you'll use the actual phone number when you get it. When filter center answers with air defense, go ahead. You begin your report like this. Aircraft flash. One multi-bomber. Low. No delay. Bravo Hotel 35 Black. North 1. Flying South. Don't hang up until Filter Center has said, check, thank you, confirming the receipt of your message. May I try it? Sure, go ahead. Now remember to hold the form up so you can see it and speak directly into the transmitter. Aircraft flash, Elliot 12345, I, I mean 4. One multi bomber Mrs. Zone. Foster, I, I hate to interrupt you, but you're not spacing properly. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, why don't you try it again? And this time, remember to pause after each item and speak clearly. I understand. Aircraft flash, Elliot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Aircraft flash, one multi bomber, low, no delay. Bravo, Hotel 35 Black, North 1, Flying South. How's that? Perfect. Like <laughs> a veteran observer. This ground observer's deal sounds like a pretty big job. Pretty tough to remember all those things. Well, it's a little difficult at first, but you'll catch on. With practice, Mr. Foster, you'll see it comes quite easy. There are a lot of small civilian planes flying around here. Do you want us to phone in about them, too? We're primarily interested in aircraft capable of attacking the country. We do want you to log information on all aircraft you see on the aircraft flash record. But we will designate the aircraft to be reported to the filter center. But what if we spot two flights of planes at the same time? In that case, you'll fill out two separate lines on the flash message record. And when you call the center, say, I have two flashes for you. What about that big plane with both regular engines and jets on it? The B-36? I think that's the one. Report any airplane with both conventional and jet engines by the number of conventional engines. Disregard the jets. The B-36, for example, would be reported as a multi-bomber. Well, now that we know what our duties are and how to report aircraft, uh, what's the next step? The Air Force will issue your operations instructions and see to your training. Of course, Jim and Sue, it's up to you to get your neighbors to help operate the post. But then you're all residents around these parts, so that shouldn't prove much of a problem. It won't. We have a lot of fine neighbors around here. Sergeant Hawkins will help with your training. I'm sure you'll have a post we'll all be proud of. Thanks for your cooperation. Within a week, the observation post at the Foster home had become an authorized post, completing the required coverage for the ground observer system in that area. A few months later, with the aid of friends and neighbors and the cooperation of civil defense officials, a fully equipped observation tower had been erected. There was nothing unusual to report from Bravo Hotel 35 Black until one day, a bomber with no identification markings entered the Foster's area of responsibility. Aircraft flash, one multi bomber, very low, no delay. Bravo Hotel 35 Black, West, one flying south. Check, thank you. I sure hope the Joneses pick up that aircraft. It's heading over their post. Mrs. Foster didn't have to worry about the Joneses. They, too, had spotted that unidentified bomber. Aircraft flash. One. Multi-bomber. Very low. No delay. Bravo Hotel 34 Black. West. Four. Flying south. At the center, the ground observer reports on the bomber were filtered and the information relayed to the Air Defense Direction Center, which intercepted the aircraft. With pilot identifying it 
as a friendly plane. It's a B-29. Fortunately, in this instance, it was being used for a mock attack, simulating a hostile bombing mission to test the effectiveness of the air defense system. Air defense is a big job. It requires radar equipment, fighter planes, anti-aircraft artillery, and other weapons. It also requires the vigilant services of thousands of ground observers. The ground observer system depends not only on the Fosters and the Joneses, but also on the teamwork of all observers reporting in with speed and accuracy. Scanning the skies and reporting the movement of aircraft. Your job may be lonely and without public recognition, but a single report from an alert observer may mean the difference between life and death for a million people. Times have changed since Paul Revere carried his famous message to every village and hamlet. But the method hasn't. You are the militia of today, guarding our country, preventing a sneak air attack penetrating below our radar screen. Remember, the sky is your target for air defense.